guys. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I just want to say thank you to your parents. Not your parents. Thank you to the parents that have come to join me today because I think you guys make the biggest impact on your children's education and I'm sure that you are showing that interest in their education. So, the stuff we've been working on in class is uh, verb stuff because I truly believe once you unlock the mystery of verbs, then your, your student will have uh, you know, a lot of control over how they can use the language. Right now, it's a lot of memorizing phrases, I think, in Spanish classes, in the bathroom, uh, things like that. I guess that's probably the most important one. Um, but what I want to do is try to teach them how to use the language, and here is how I'm doing it in class. Hopefully you understand this, and then you can explain it to them in a way that you know they'll understand, because you really are the one that knows who, you know, how they learn the best. So, to start out, we take infinitives. Infinitive is the basic unit of a verb. Uh, in English, you recognize an infinitive like this. To run, to cook, to see, to meet. Um, and it only answers one real question. It answers what the action is, what's happening. So they're not that useful. If you think about it in terms of a wild horse. A wild horse, I guess, has a use but not really one specific to your life. Um, you have to change this infinitive in order for it to fit your purposes. Like you have to train a wild horse to serve your purpose. That's probably not a very good example. When you change the infinitive, you conjugate it. Conjugate it. So the conjugated verb is no longer to run, but it's I run, you cook, we see, they meet. Okay? This gives you three pieces of information. It gives you what's happening, running, who it's happening to, I, and when it's happening. This is the present tense, and this is really what we're covering in class right now. The present tense. I run, you cook, we see, they meet. If this was in the past tense, you would say, I ran, so you'd still have three pieces of information. You'd have I, running, but it's past because it's ran. You cooked, we saw, and they met. This is much more complicated in English than it is in Spanish, as a matter of fact. You'll see it. So there you go. It answers the three questions, if you're taking notes at home. What, who, and when it's happening. There are a myriad of tenses that you can use verbs in. You can say, I see, I will see, I have seen, I'm going to see, I would see, I could see, I would like to see. Okay, there's, a, there's tons of these tenses, okay? In Spanish, I think they're much easier to learn than in English, which is my native language. Okay, let's break down, like we do in class, we'll break down an infinitive so you get to see how it works. The original, the basic unit, to speak, you have the to on the front, to speak. The first person, singular, you notice there's a T here. On this side of the T, on the left, you have all of the singular uh, people, all the subjects that are singular. One person. I am one person. You are one person. He, she, it, that is considered the third person. So if you um, you want to rem memorize it saying, you know, I'm number one, you are number two, he is number three. It rhymes in that sense. On the right side, so if the left side is singular, the right side is plural. Um, if you put I in a group with other people, we call ourselves we. We run, we speak, we talk, okay? If you put you in a group, if I'm talking to your family, I say you guys or y'all or wherever you're from, you guys if you're from Philly, and 
Uh, the third one, he, if I put he in a group, I'm not talking to him, but I'm talking about him or them. I'm saying they, they do this, they, they do this. They speak Spanish. So does that make sense? You have first person singular, second person singular, third person singular, first person plural, second person plural, and third person plural. You'll see this again, this is important to know because, um, I'm going to edit that out. Okay. Alright, now, talking about infinitives in English, they're recognizable because they start with to. To speak, to eat, to run, to jog, to walk, to whistle, whatever you want to say. To, and then the, the verb. It doesn't give you a certain person, it doesn't give you a certain time. So it's called the infinitive. And yes, infinity is related to infinitive. And if you want to find out why, you can give me a call or an email, whatever. But in Spanish, infinitives are recognizable because they end, their endings, and I'll show you a couple in a minute. Endings are in AR, IR, or ER. So the word will end with an AR, an IR, or an ER. Or if you want to make it simple, the verb that ends in R is an infinitive. So you see this one ends in AR, hablar. This means to speak. Hablar, please don't say hablar, hablar, no. It's hablar, the H is silent. Decir ends in IR, so you know it's an infinitive. And correr ends in ER, so you know it's an infinitive, or it ends in R, so you know it's an infinitive. Okay, you saw this, this T earlier. On this side of the T, singular, on the right side is plural. So, I am number one, you are number two, he is number three. For simplicity's sake, we're going to use he, but just understand that she and it also fall under number three. So if you're talking about a wild animal, any animal, um, a thing that is it, he doesn't have a he or she gender, then you're going to use third person singular. First person plural, second person plural, third person plural. This is the same exact way we're going to set up the verb in Spanish. Um, so you get to know who, who the person is that we're talking about. So hablar, again, is the infinitive, it is an AR, R. Okay, if you're going to talk about yourself, the verb in the present tense, the infinitive, you're going to take off the AR, and you're going to add O. So if I say hablo, it means I speak. Hablas, not hablar, hablars, hablas. You speak. Habla. He speaks. She speaks. Hablamos. We speak. Hablan. They speak. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Y'all speak. You all. You guys. And third person plural. They speak. Okay, you see it here. Hablo. Not hablar anymore. Not hablar. Hablo. Hablas, habla, hablamos, hablan, hablan. So here, here you have it more spelled out. Hablo means I speak. There is nothing on the front of the verb that you need to add to say I. Because everyone understands in Spanish, if you say hablo, there's no other person that could be. I speak. Hablas, same thing. There's no other person it could be except you. If I say to you, hablas español, I'm either stating that you do speak Spanish or asking you, do you speak Spanish? Habla is the A ending. Amos, an, an. Hablo español, I speak Spanish. Hablas español. I have a lot of students ask me, how do you say do in Spanish? Uh, when they want to ask a question, do you have a dog? Do you speak Spanish? Whatever. 
Do is inherent in a verb. A verb is something that you do. Uh, in English, we say do. In Spanish, we don't have to. We understand that the verb is something that you do. We don't have to say a separate word for it when we ask a question. Because what we're literally saying here is, I do speak Spanish. Do you speak Spanish? Does he speak Spanish? This is something that he does, or he doesn't, maybe. And yes, he does speak Spanish. So, does he, and he does, and he speaks, are all the same verb conjugation. And that should do it for right now. I'm going to come back with more information on shoe verbs uh, and go verbs, which are uh, not that complicated, but they can add a lot to a student's repertoire. Okay, thank you for joining me. I'm going back to the beach. You guys go back to whatever you're doing. Okay, see you later. Gracias.